So if you have your Bibles, um, I'm going to actually read two separate verses today. I'm going to be in James and then in 1 Corinthians, and it should be on the board in a second. Um, so that you can kind of follow along with me. But, um, <coughs> yep, the Sky Bible. That's right, the Sky Bible. So I put my little cheater notes in here so that I could just flip right to it. But um, while you're turning there, I just want to say I am so excited about this new building. Um, it's very scary, as, you know, coming here was very scary. But I really am excited about the ministry opportunity. The fact of the space we're going to have, the classrooms we're going to have, the things we're going to be able to do moving forward. And I really believe that this is the next step for our church to grow. And so um, I really, as we go into next year, I just want you guys to really be praying for God to continue to pour out his blessings on, on our church family and our church. And for God to continue to bring new people, for God to continue to allow us to reach this city together. And so I'm just so thankful for everybody here and all your faithfulness because we, this would, none of this would be possible without each and every one of you. And so we just love you guys so much and are so grateful for everything. So I'm going to start off, and I'm going to read in James <clears throat> chapter 1, um, starting at verse 21 to 27. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For, is any, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For, his observer, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work... This one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and un undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit the orphans and the widows in their, in their trouble and to keep oneself uh, unspotted from the world. And then I'm going to flip over to James. <clears throat> James... Oh, that was James. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Thank you. I'll give you guys a second to go there. And then, yeah, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, understood as a child, thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. All right, so I'm going to pray. Father, we just thank you again for the opportunity to be here, Lord. It's, it's something that we tend to take for granted, the opportunity to come into a place and worship together and be with fellow believers. And Lord, more than anything right now, I pray that your spirit will just fill this place, that your Holy Spirit will lead and direct me as I speak your word today, Lord, and that you will touch every heart that's here. Lord, that you will bless us in this time together and be with us. We thank and we praise you. Amen. All right, so my title today is simply grow up. And I know that kind of comes across a little harsh, and I'm not trying to be harsh. And honest to God, when I was preparing this, I told Jonathan, I'm like, I feel like it's coming across a little harsh. <laughs> but um, the goal of this is to inspire you, not condemn you. So I really hope you receive that today. It's to inspire you and to inspire myself. Because as we go throughout life, we tend to kind of just, you know, it gets very mundane. You know, it's like the same thing every day. You know, I get up, I go to work, I go, I cook dinner sometimes, or we, you know, we eat. <laughs> and then, um, you know, the kids do homework, go to bed, turn around, do it the next day, get up, go to work, same routine, same thing. Every, it just gets boring. And so sometimes we just get caught in this rut. And so I'm going to talk about growing up because there comes a point in time in life where we have to grow up. And, um, and so it's not only time for us to grow up, but to also go. It's not only time for us to grow, but to also go. Because you can't really go and do what you're called to do until you grow. And so growing up, um, we grow up so that we can we can go out and be doers. Like, that's what I read about. That was my, that's my whole point today is to teach us and to help inspire us to grow up and be doers, not hearers. Right now you're hearing. That's great. But you can't just leave it here. You have to go and be a doer. And so it was funny because I was thinking about, like, different ways that I could um, 
that, you know, I could tie this in. And in 1 Corinthians it says, you know, when I spoke as a, when I, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, acted like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. <clears throat> and it made me think, and I'm going to call some people out, <laughs> it made me think of, um, there's a couple people in this room, and we tend to make jokes about them because of their, their way that they eat. So um, they tend to be, we always joke around and say they have the palate of a five-year-old because, and that would be Jonathan and Stephanie, <laughs> because they do. Um, if it's green, Jonathan will not eat it. Um, he likes to stick to very, you know, anything that a five-year-old would eat is what Jonathan and Stephanie will eat. <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty much how it goes. And so with then, I thought of something else. And I have a little video clip I want to show you. Go to the next thing. This is adorable. This is Jaden. You want a bite? No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like green beans. <laughs> you want to pee? What about a noodle? Can you want a bite? <laughs> then why do you take it? <laughs> so I had to share that just to get my kid in the video. No, in this, no, I'm kidding. But no, I mean, he's so adorable. Look at him. But what was funny is I started thinking about that. I started thinking about how we as children, you know, our children, they tend to, you know, eat, eat certain things and act certain ways and do and do that. But then there comes a point in time when you're looking at your, you know, 14 or 15 year old and you're like, you got to grow up. You know, I mean, there's comes a point in time when you have to grow up, whether you want to or not. You can't be a 20 year old person acting like a five year old kid pitching a fit not because you're not getting your way. And so with Jaden, what I thought was funny is, um, you know, when you look at this scripture, how it says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. You know, what do babies need? Babies start off with milk, and then they go to baby food. But then what happens is over time, that baby food no longer sustains them. They won't, they won't gain weight. They won't continue to grow and develop properly. So they have to move on to solid food. And what I thought was funny is, here we are in that video. We're trying to feed Jaden solid food, and he just keeps spitting it out. And do we not do the same thing? We sit here in church, and we're getting fed solid, but we don't want to take it. We just spit it back out because we don't want to hear it. And again, to inspire you, not condemn you, So, but because I'm guilty of that too. There's always times when people come and they're like, listen, I have a word for you. I have something that I feel like I need to tell you. you know, or you ask for their opinion or advice. I can't tell you countless times, especially in youth ministry, um, we'd sit there and these kids would be like, I just don't know what to do. Or these people, I don't know what to do. And we're like, well, what do you want? And they're, well, I need you to tell me what to do. Okay, well, then we sit there for an hour, hour and a half. And we're like, well, this is what the Word of God says. This is what really we think you should do since you're asking our opinion. And then they walk out the door and do the complete opposite. And it's like, what did I even waste my time for? And so, you know, I just think that it's funny how that related. And I, and I thought, I told Jonathan, I said, I'm going to throw in the video of Jaden because is that not exactly what we do? And it's cute when an eight-month-old does it. But a 30-year-old? I'm going to pretend I'm 30. <laughs> um, yeah, 30-year-old? <laughs> So, but the problem is we don't, we don't want that solid food. We don't, we don't really want to do it, but we have to be not only hearers, but doers of the word. We come to church to hear and be filled, but we can't stop there. It's time to grow so that we can go be a doer. Like on my video here, there's a little tree <clears throat> And, you know, it's funny when you think about it because I'm, me and Jonathan are totally not by any means like have a green thumb in any way shape or form like I have nothing to do with live plants like I don't know how to do them I'm like can we just rocks out front and like call it good because I want no part of landscaping I want no part of anything and you know but when you take a seed for those of you who do garden or like to plant things you take this tiny little round seed and then you plant it in the ground and then you water it now the thing is is that what would happen if the seed just stayed a seed? Nothing. But it has to grow. It has to grow so that it becomes something beautiful. You can't continue 
you to remain a seed because then there's no change in your life. There's no fruit. There's nothing bearing. And so I thought that that really tied in with my graphic. And so when we sit here and we look at it, we think we need to grow. So how do you grow? I'm glad you asked. I got some ways. No. So, okay, the first thing that you have to do and that each of us have to do is we have to evaluate ourselves. And a lot of times that's difficult. In the text, he talked about looking into a mirror, observing his natural face. So I'm going to read to you a quote. Charles Spurgeon said, The glass of the word is not like an ordinary looking glass, which merely shows us our external features. But according to the Greek of our text, the man sees in it the face of his birth, that is the face of his nature. He that reads and hears the word may see not only his actions, but his motives, his desires, and his inward condition. So we have to evaluate ourselves, our inward condition, so that we can see what needs to be worked on. So, I mean, over the years, I've really had to grow up a lot, um, not just, you know, in, in, in ministry. We started out in 2006 at 24 years old um, going into ministry, and we started out as youth pastoring. And so right away, we, like, got thrown into this, and we're like, well, we're going to build a youth group. We can do this. And so we continued to have to grow and learn as we do every day now. And so I, I was thinking about... When, whenever we started doing that, I really had to start reflecting on myself and really start looking in the mirror and think, who am I and who do I want to be in, your, in my inward condition? And it's funny because whenever we go to City Life, I help lead the, um, what's my girls group called? Leading Ladies. I help do the Leading Ladies. And so I sit there and we talk to these girls about themselves because we're trying to inspire them as well to move forward and be everything that God created them to be and to grow in God. And a lot of these girls are in high school. And, it, and it's funny to me as I sit there and I speak to them and I tell them the things that I think, you know, to help them and equip them, it's the exact same things that we have to do as adults. Honestly, nothing really changes other than your growth. Because the same thing you do to a child, you can do to an adult. It's just perceived differently. Like, you teach a child to walk, and that's great. Yeah, you don't have to teach an adult to walk, but you have to teach them how to walk a different way. And so there's always something, you know, developing and growing. And so we tell these girls, you know, you can be anything you want to be. You have to make up your mind, focus, and grow. And one of the things that I speak about all the time and we talk to them about is you have to know your circle. Who's in your circle? Are the people in your circle, the people that you talk to the most? Go through, I, honestly, this is part of your evaluation process, unfortunately. Go through your phone. Look at your most recent text messages. And look at the, look at the top ten people you've texted. Are they helping you grow? Are they truly pouring into you? Are they somebody that you want in your life and need in your life that are going to help you grow and reach your next level and to move forward into 28? We're getting ready to go into 2018. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to continue to grow. I want things to change in 2018. 2017 had some ups and some downs. There was some good and there was some bad. I do feel like I grew in 2017, but I want to grow in 2018. And that's, that's the point. We have to grow up. There comes a point when we cannot stay where we're at. We have to move forward. And so look through your text messages. Look through your Facebook. Who, who, who are you seeing posting stuff and, or your Snapchat? Is that person really edifying you at all? Or is it dragging you down? When you evaluate yourself, you have to look and say, what am I holding on to that I need to let go of? Because the truth is, is if you continue to harbor things, that's going to separate you from God. You cannot grow when you're holding things that you won't let go of. And I know that that sounds easier said than done. We've all been there. We've all had somebody hurt us, somebody destroy us, somebody do something to us. But there comes a point when you have to say, you know what? Which I'm going to quote Christine Kane here because I love her. But she says, what God did for me is way bigger than what anybody could ever do to me. And we have to really get that and move forward with that. So evaluate your friends. Evaluate your social media. Remove some things that are, that are causing you to look the other way or to not grow. Evaluate yourself and your inward condition, your heart. 
you have to look at your heart and decide, what a, where is my heart? You know, and the th you may think that you're completely fine with somebody, but the moment their name comes up, something changes in you. Then there's a problem there. There is a problem there, and you have got to let it go. Because what that is like a cancer that will eat away at you. And whether you want to believe it or not, you forgive so that you can be forgiven. That is a principle and a law. When you do not forgive and you harbor resentment, what happens is it begins to separate you from God. I believe one of the biggest tricks of the enemy is to get you to, un to not forgive people because that will separate you from God faster than anything else. And so we have to look at our inward condition, our heart. We have to decide that we want more. We want to change. We want to let go. And like we say all the time, and I mean everybody hears this, you forgive not for them, for you. You have to move on. You have to let go of things. You know, and maybe it's yourself. Maybe there's things you've done that you just can't get over. Maybe there's things that you can't forgive yourself for. But you have to because God forgives you. If you go to God with your heart and you say, I'm so sorry, please forgive me, he will forgive you. That's what he does best. He takes the bad and makes it good. And so we have to look at our, our inward condition, our desires. What are we desiring? Are we desiring things that are godly? Or are we desiring things that are not? And that's a problem there, too. We have to look at all of that stuff. So our first step is to examine ourselves. We have to examine ourselves. A healthy person looks in the mirror to do something, not just admire the image. So if you're just admiring your image, there might be a problem there. Because maybe, you know, really, we all need work. We all have to, have to continue to grow. So the second step is to acknowledge. So anyone will tell you the first step to recovery is admitting there's a problem. You have, to, you have to look in the mirror, you have to examine yourself, and actually admit your flaws. And say, you know what? I need to let go of this. I need to change this. I need to cha shift this desire. I need to, there, there's something that you need to look at and do. In verse 26, it says, if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his, his own hearer, Wait, it's supposed to be heart. I think I wrote it down wrong. Let me look at it again. 26, it's heart. If anyone is among you, thinks he is religious, and does not bridle his own tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. So, for one, you have to be a Christian, not just say you're a Christian. And the problem is we have a lot of quote-unquote Christians out there giving true Christians a really bad name. The bottom line is, to be a Christian is to be Christ-like. If you're not being Christ-like, then this may sound harsh, but stop calling yourself a Christian. Because you cannot continue to be a Christian and say you're a Christian if you're not acting like a Christian. You can't just be a hearer. You have to be a doer. And in this context, it talks about brid bridling your tongue. Well, a bridle is, the, thing, is the, the metal thing that they put on horses to help steer and direct them. So when you think of it like that, who is steering and directing you? Who is helping you control your tongue and control what you're doing? Who are you letting control you? Because the bottom line is either God is controlling you, or the enemy is controlling you. It's black and white. There's, it's either one or the other. That's all there is to it. And listen, you're not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat you guys. So, huh? That was a threat. After church, it's on. No, but no. <laughs> We're, hey, righteous anger in the in the church house. No, I'm kidding. Listen. So we have to think about who is guiding us. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. He is there to be our counselor, our guider, our our the person who guides us, our guider. You like that? <laughs> Make up words. But if you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to bridle your tongue and direct you every day then there's a problem there. Again, growing. This isn't an easy process. This isn't just something you can just wake up tomorrow and do, but you have to, like, John, like Pastor Jonathan said, either last week or the week before, take baby steps. You have to be better today than you were yesterday. And then tomorrow, better than you were today. And then next week, better than you were this week. Next year, better than you were this year. And so you have to think about who is bridling you. Who are you letting lead you? Are you going after your own desires, your own wants, your own needs? Or are you 
seeking God and, and, and trying to figure out what he does. The thing is, and what I find so ironic and what I tell so many people is, they're like, well, I just want to be happy and I just want to do this. Well, I promise you, the word of God is there to direct you and give you clarification. Everything in his word is there to protect you. Like we tell these teenagers all the time whenever we youth pastor and I tell my own children, it's not a book of don'ts. It's a book of this is what will make you be happy. This is what will make you be successful because everything in here that he does not want you to do is because it brings heartache and pain. God is only trying to protect you. It is not a book of don'ts. It's a book of I love you. Please don't because that is what shifts everything. And so you have to allow the Holy Spirit to be your counselor. But again, if you're holding on to resentment, anger, and you're not, your heart's not right, you're not, you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to even speak to you. You know, there's so many times that you sit here and you, and you hear the voice of God and you just choose to ignore it because it's not what you want, because you're angry or you're frustrated or some, some other reason you have. You have to start listening to that, to that small voice and it will continue to get louder and louder and louder. And, you know, you have to allow it to be a counselor. Like, whenever a kid goes into high school or you go into college, you know, usually you can sit down with your guidance counselor and you explain to them, you know, this is what I want for my future, especially if you go into college. What classes do I need to take to get to the degree I want to be successful and do the career I want to do? And that counselor will sit there and direct you. Well, that's kind of what the Holy Spirit does. He wants you to sit down with him and go through this, well, I've placed this calling on your life. I've given you this desire in your heart. You want to get there? Well, this is, these are the steps you need to make. Let me lead you and direct you. These are the things you need to do. But what happens is we don't want to meet with the counselor. We don't want to take the time to sit down and go through this stuff with him. It, it, we just don't. But the thing is, is that, you know what? You may not want to meet with the counselor, but one day you will be in the dean's office. And he will have a say about what your future holds. And so we have to be prepared for that, whether you wanna be or not. So my advice, meet with your counselor. Meet with your counselor, get where you need to go. Have him direct you and continue to lead you in everything that you do. And so <clears throat> the second step, like I said, is totally acknowledging. So when you have to, and then it says over here, it says relationship versus religion. And I know you hear this said a lot, especially by us, but I really mean it. Religion is rituals. That's all it is. It's, well, we need to do this, do that, do this, do that. It, but it's really about relationship. That's what Jesus came for. Jesus came to set us free from the law of religion. We have to have a relationship with Jesus. That is what opens the door to the Holy Spirit to speak into us. It's relationship versus religion. So what is your relationship like? I always tell our, I always tell our kids, and I, I tell anybody really that listens, I say, if I, were, you know, if I were to call like Stephanie on the phone, and you know, we all have caller ID, but pretend we don't. I call her from an unknown number. All I have to say is, hey, and she knows my voice. She knows, she knows my voice. I mean, we've, we've been friends for a long time. She knows my voice. Jonathan knows my voice. But if I were to call, you know, somebody over at Arby's and I say, hey, they're not going to know my voice. They're going to be like, who are you? Well, the same thing works with God. You're not going to hear that small voice until you, until you communicate with him. The more you talk to him, the more you recognize his voice. The more you let him lead you. So how much are you calling him? How much are you actually speaking with him? How much are you actually talking to him? Because that's the only way that you're going to get to the place to where you recognize his voice and you allow him to lead and direct you. That is relationship versus religion. We want you to come to church, but this church has nothing to do with your relationship with Jesus. This is, to some degree, religion. We come here to meet and, and to inspire each other and to be together and grow because it's important. Don't, I mean, I'm not saying that the body and the fellowship is not important because it is, but what good is coming here if you don't have a relationship? It means nothing. The point of this is to help grow and edify your relationship with Jesus. That is the point of coming here. And so the third thing we have to do is we have to change. So we sit here and we've now evaluated ourselves. We've looked in the mirror. We've looked at our, onward, and our inward man. We've looked at our heart. 
We've taken an evaluation of our relationships, our circles, on everything that we're doing. We've acknowledged what we need to change. We've acknowledged where we need to grow, the things we need to do to move forward, and now we have to actually put it into action. And this one is the hardest part because unfortunately, a lot of times, we're lazy. I mean, and that's, that's what it boils down to. It's easier to say something than to actually do it. And so we tend to be lazy and just, oh, well, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. And everything's tomorrow. Oh, I'll get to that next week. And the next thing you know, years have gone by. And you're in the same place you were in, not moving forward, not growing. So you have to change. And now we have to be inspired to change. And like I said, to continue to come to church and do that stuff. We have to be doers, not only, he not only hearers. Like I said, we're fixing to go into this new year. And I know it's a big thing. Oh, let's make a New Year's resolution. You know, let's, let's decide, you know, what we're going to do. And, and, and let's change this and change that. But the thing is, is that it's, it, those always crack me up because you're like, December, like January 15th and ain't nobody done anything on their New Year's resolution. <laughs> I mean, I really don't make them anymore because I don't know that I've ever really made them because I've always seen people do that. It's like, that's it. This year, every day, I'm going to the gym. And then January 3rd, yet and gone once. I mean, that's the truth. It happens. And so we, you know, I don't, I'm not saying make a New Year's resolution, but I want you to be mindful going into the next year. Maybe sit down and write it out. Write out your, write out, you know, your, um, your things. Write out your evaluation and the things that you want to change. Write out the things that you're going to do to move forward to make these changes going into next year. I mean, we're right here. It's hard to believe that it's going to be 2018. I mean, I remember thinking in like 1998, I'm going to graduate in 2000 and what is happening? And then now I'm almost 20 years graduated and I just don't even feel that old. It's hard to believe that we are so far away, like 2018 people, 2018. But moving into this next year, I personally want to grow. I want to see you guys grow. The thing is, is that Jonathan and I can honestly say we have a personal relationship with almost everybody in this room. And as I sit here and I look at each and every one of you, I see the potential in you. I see the desire in you. I see the passion in you. And all I want more than anything is for you to grow. All I want more than anything is for you to change. All I want more than anything is for you to meet your potential in Christ. Because that is what it's all about. So many people think, oh, I want, I want this, I want a big house, I want a nice car, I want that. That's not even what it's about. What it's about is living this life to get to our final destination. How many people can we reach for his kingdom? How many lives can we change just by saying good morning and telling them about Jesus and sharing God's love? So I know that it's easier said than done. I know that change is hard. I know that we sit here and we think, well, I don't know how to change. I've been this way for so long. And that's true. That is true. It, you know, somebody once told Jonathan when he first got saved, they said, you know, you got saved when you were 21. So you were, took, took you 21 years to get to the place you were. It's not like overnight, boom, you're a different person. But you have to make a conscious effort every day to change that. You have to change your thinking. If you do not change your thinking, you cannot change. And you know what's the best way to change your thinking? To get into the word of God. Every day, get into the word of God and do your devotions. There are devotion books for days. There is the Bible app with amazing devotions on it. Short ones too. They don't take very long. Every day, do something to edify your mind. Paul said, daily, I crucify my flesh. Daily. Daily, get in the word of God. Continue to allow yourself to grow and change, to let him speak into you, to, to continue to let you be everything that you need to be, to continue to reach your next, your next level like we name the church, to, to continue to be the person that, you, that God created you to be. We're, I mean, so many of you guys are not living your full potential because you're choosing not to. And I want nothing more than to see this church and the city of Fort Wayne and the United States of America to grow in God and make changes. I want to be a change maker. I want to see things change. And so, again, we have to be doers, not just hearers. I'm so thankful you all come and hear. 
However, you cannot just be doers, you have to be hearers. And so, um, as I get ready to close, I don't even know what time it is. Okay. Okay. Um, as I get ready to close, there's a story about a group of tourists that were visiting a um, little picturesque village. So a really cute village, like it looked really awesome. And so these tourists are, are visiting this village, and they walk by an older man sitting by a fence. And one of the tourists says to him, kind of abrasively and, pa and patronizingly, like, were any, were any great men born in this village? And the man replied, nope, only babies. Like, really think about that, though. Were any great men born in this village? And he said, nope, only babies. Because That's a profound answer. Because greatness is not born, it's developed. A hero isn't just born, they're developed. So you have to develop yourself. You can be a great man or a great woman, but you have to develop yourself. We can be better. We can continue to be better. We continue to grow and be better every day. But we have to keep on growing. We have to keep on trying. We have to um, grow so that we can go. Because I don't know about you, but I want to go. I want to go out and I want to reach people for Jesus. I want to go out and I want to be happy and I want to be free and I want to live my life for him. And so greatness isn't born, it's developed. So I want you to think today, I need to grow. I need to grow so I can go and I, and I can make a difference. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for everything that you do and for everything that you give us in your word. Lord, how you inspire us to change and be everything that you created us to be. Lord, you breathed the breath of life into us. You gave us a passion and a desire, each and every one of us, a unique passion and desire for you. Lord, I pray right now that you will stir up that passion and that desire, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to speak to each person here, Lord, and, and show them the promises that you have for them, the greatness that you have for them, Lord. You have created each of us unique and special for a purpose. Help us see that purpose today. Help us to want to grow today.